Bro, trust me, I'm the jailer. No, I'm the man! Hey. What? I'll be the negative parts of your review. I love when people hate me. What? I'll be a new character. So you're basically me, but black- No! I'm the darkness. It's Halloween. I'm- Edgy! Town of Salem is a game a lot of you probably have not heard of. A game of deception, mystery, and murder, as quoted from the website. The game is free to play if you're curious, however, a version can be bought on Steam, as well as web premium and mobile premium versions. Those last three only being there to support the paid DLC pack, the Coven expansion. Now the game plays with 15 players online trying to get their team to win. Parties for friends also provided. It's great that you can do this, but it may be kind of boring for that friend who dies in the first minute of the game. Emo, please, keep your salty bites out of the review, thank you. Now if you are playing on your own, or you don't care about your friends, you can leave as soon as you die and you will not be punished for it. However, there are still advantages to staying in the game after you die, which is nice if you want to stick it out with your friend or something. The base game centralizes around two main teams, the town and the mafia. The members of each team identified with their respective colors, green and red, as well as some neutral roles thrown in for some extra chaos. The town tries to eliminate all non-town members that pose a threat to their survival. The Mafia tries to disrupt that and kill everyone except themselves, whether through deception in a trial during the day, or by murdering them at night. Now upon opening up the game and selecting play, the game displays three normal modes, two custom, and three chaos, all of which I will detail. All modes feature a night and day phase, day being a time for players to exchange info gathered at night, suspicions, and to vote against players who they want to see lynched during the judgement phase. The voting consists of a certain amount of players choosing to send another player up to trial, and a defence phase in which the accused can try and prove themselves not guilty. The strategy here is to claim you're a town role, because you are one, right? Speaking of which, the roles are where this game truly shines. Each mode differs in roles, this being what separates each of them. During the night phase, players are able to perform the given abilities of their randomly selected role. The roles differ in types, but all have some form of helping their designated team. The sheriff, for example, can choose a target and investigate them. The results of the investigation are then given at the end of the night phase, which is when you find out all your necessary information. This is also when you die to roles like the Mafioso and the Godfather of the Mafia. So you might not even get to reveal anything to the town, because you'll have bitten the dust. Yes, that is a legitimate strategy, not that negative. It is if you're dead. Just to recap, the roles are all very exciting and fun to play, except the odd few that can be very boring sometimes if nothing is happening. Now in terms of the evil side of the roles, they can be either more or less entertaining depending on how you like to play. The evil roles of the Mafia really have to lie and deceive their way through the discussion phase to avoid suspicion, even setting out a fake will of information and pretending to be a fellow townie. Wills are an essential part of the gameplay, thanks Donkness or whatever you're even called, allowing a full page of information regarding your role and what you've discovered. Copying and pasting your will into the provided chat allows the town a potential way to differentiate you. However, if pulled off well enough, you can definitely weasel your way into their trust with an effective will. The neutral roles now are the final type of roles outside of the Coven expansion. These roles having their own winning conditions specific to them. Neutral killing roles focus on trying to kill everyone else on their own with their own set of abilities. These being the serial killer, arsonist, and the werewolf. These roles are almost rigged to play, as you're all alone and pretty discoverable. Kind of a thrill to win with, but incredibly stressful otherwise. That can be fun though, depending on what you like, I guess. I do like conquering bodies and manipulating people who trust me. We also have the neutral evil roles, trying to manipulate the town and get in their way. The Jester, for example, tries to fool the town into believing they're evil, thus need to be lynched. They need to be lynched on the stand though, otherwise it does not count. Neutral evil is really fun to play if you have a good scheme thought up to get your way. Way easier than the stupid neutral killing. The satisfaction you get knowing they're all baffled at what you just pulled off is unmatched. It really does suck if they catch you though, so act fast. Now that the amazing roll system has been covered, you might be wondering how you can even use these rolls. This bringing us back to the modes mentioned earlier. Beginning with normal modes, we have the stupid classic mode, a hub full of noobs and people who can't think pretty- Ahem! Come on dude, they're really bad at the game. Yes, okay, once a certain skill level is reached, this mode is incredibly frustrating or easy depending on your role. But it really is a good opening ground for the newer players to get the hang of strategy and the basic roles. The mode provides a smaller variety of more specific roles rather than just types. And the game also helps to tell you good ways to play each role upon your first time receiving said role. The mode is a good gateway into the basics, but once you can, I recommend getting out of there. Ranked Practice is the second of the normal modes, this time giving a completely new set of possible roles in the game. The combination of roles can also be completely different each time you play, so it might be a bit hard to get the hang of at the start sadly. 
But after a while, it can get really intense and strategic with a lot more competent players. Ranked is the final mode of the three normal modes and is the real deal version of Ranked Practice. Ranked is the same role list as in Ranked Practice, except with no parties and points allocated out to determine your rank. I hardly play Ranked though, because it really does require intense concentration and a lot of skill I don't have. The game offers a custom mode too, and a rapid mode. The second mode literally no one uses, so it doesn't matter. It's just a faster game with less time to do anything. Custom basically allows the designated hosts to select whatever roles they'd like. Pretty good feature, although it is really annoying when it takes so long to be selected host if that's what you're joining for. Best to just round up 15 players of your own in a party and play it through there. The final tab here is just complete chaos, like stupid combinations of roles, but a nice added feature that I'm sure crazy fans would enjoy. I would not though. Now as I mentioned all the way in the beginning, the game also has a great optional DLC pack if you like the base game titled The Coven Expansion. The expansion offers a new Mafia style team known as The Coven, a group of witches with mystical powers outside of the Mafia's guns and stuff. It really is a good deal if you're looking for more to do in the game as it introduces 15 new roles spread over a few new modes. Unfortunately, that is where the expansion is heavily flawed. The base game is free, and there is a lot more there already. So much so that a lot of casual players haven't even bought the expansion. The only cluster of players really playing is in Coven Ranked Practice. But these roles are really a lot more exciting in my opinion, which is why it sucks that so you can basically only play Ranked Practice. At least down in Australia because all the Americans have already gone to sleep in our afternoon. Maybe in the morning you'll have more luck with the other modes. Either way, DLC that is extremely worth it, brought down only by the lack of people you're able to play it with. It isn't that bad of an issue, it's just, it might take you a while. Finally, we arrive at the last features, the most prominent being the shop. After whatever game mode, you can earn merit points, the silver coins displayed on the menu, as well as being able to purchase town points, which are the gold ones. Stupid microtransaction. Shop sells various cosmetic items, however, the real good stuff is in the scrolls. If you want, you can buy a scroll that highly increases your chance of getting the role specific to the scroll you purchased. These aren't allowed in rank though. So that's Town of Salem. I highly recommend playing it, but refuse to provide a practical rating, so it gets whatever this is. It's good though, I think. After a tremendous selection of roles and variety of modes, great options and ways to play all around, exciting and addictive gameplay, and quite a small but fitting soundtrack to cover the general mood, I'd say to please play this game. It's a unique gem that deserves more attention. Anyway, Skull Troopers, Mum says you can't eat all your candy before bed.